Welcome back, part five. We're, I guess it remains, to set up, and we're about to set up the VPN, IPsec VPN tunnel. So I've gone back to the East router. We know they can all ping each other. We know everything is available. The two hosts can ping each other. So all our routing is working absolutely fine. Um, the only problem is, of course, if it was the, the internet rather than this fake router that we've created, everything is completely and utterly unencrypted and visible to the entire world. So what we wanna do is actually set up a, an encrypted tunnel and to do that, this is a VPN IPsec tunnel that will enable us to encrypt all of the communications outbound from the east and inbound into the west. So that through the internet, nobody, if they did um, have a look at our packets, would know what was actually contained within those packets, whether it was a ping or whether it was actual, you know, serious information and documents from our company. So we want to use the internet, of course we do, because it's a much more cost-effective way of achieving wide area networking. So we want to use the internet, but we want to protect all of our information. And you do that with a VPN. So it remains to do that. So how do you do that? Well, let's go into configure mode. We know our routing's working, so we want to set our VPN uh, IPsec, IPsec interfaces. We want to tell it, first of all, what is the interface. And then we want to run through the three phases of setting up the actual uh, encryption. So I'll talk through what those are as well. Um, IP interfaces, uh, interface, and which interface is it? Well, it's going to be ETH0. It's going to be ETH0 um, because we can do a run show interfaces. Our ETH0 is our 64.0.0.2. Um, so we want to go outbound here, that's one end of our tunnel, and inbound on the other end will be the 38.0.0.2 uh, on the west. But this is the east, so we're going to set it up on ETH0. We're then going to say that... Um, we need to do now set up the encryption. So uh, there'll be a phase one, which will be a key exchange. Um, that's what we're about to do now, which will be your IKE group or your uh, the keys that will establish, first of all, uh, a communication to the other end of the tunnel to negotiate what will be all of the encryption for the tunnel. And then we will apply that in phase three to we'll apply that crypto map to the actual interface to ETH0. <coughs> so, excuse me, what we want to do is tell it what our IKE group is. So we want to set um, VPN IPsec and we want to have an IKE group. Whoops, I was actually in here. Set VPN IPsec IKE group. Okay. And we're going to call the group MYIKE. Well, we might as well, or Mike for short. So MYIKE, and we're going to have proposals. So this is what sort of encryption to use. Proposals, sorry, not proposals. Uh, and proposal one will be an encryption, and I'm going to suggest AES256 to the other end of the top. So that's fine. We then want to set uh, the IKE group we want to have a proposal for the hash. And the hash I'm suggesting is a SHA-1. So again, this is all the encryption. If you're not familiar with the ins and outs of VPN, then a lot of this won't make sense, but I'm doing a tutorial on how to set it up. I highly recommend um, any one of um, Odom Wendell's CCNA books or there's many, many videos on YouTube for understanding the ins and outs of actual IPsec and how it works and how it actually sets things up. So, you know, it can get very deep very quickly, IPsec. Um, you can start to overlay uh, within it uh, GRE or MGRE. But I'm just going to set up, for the purposes of this, a site-to-site -site VPN encrypted tunnel so that our communications get encrypted. 
Um, if you need any of that other stuff and you need the theory behind all of this, please dive onto YouTube and have a good uh, listen and watch of uh, people far smarter than me talking about IPsec and how it actually works. I'm just used to using it and this is how you get it set up. Um, so then we want to set uh, VPN, IPsec. We want to do the IKE group again and we want to have a secondary proposal. So proposal two, encryption, this time we'll make it AES128. And then we want to do exactly the same. Proposal to hash, we're going to stick with SHA1. Excellent, right? Then we want to set up the lifetime, how long these keys will operate. Because IPsec will automatically update the keys and renegotiate keys between both ends of the tunnel while it is up and running. So it will renegotiate these based on this timeline. So we want to set up uh, IPsec, IKE group, and we want to give it a lifetime for these keys. Um, and let's give it 3600, 3600 seconds. That's fine. Once you've got your IKE group, you now need your ESP group. Um, so the ESP is again another layer of encryption. Um, the keys will be negotiated by the IKE group, uh, the ISA camp. Um, so it will negotiate the keys and then the keys will be used in the actual tunnel. So the ESP group will be the actual tunnel here. So this time we're going to go back here and do the ESP group. And why don't we stick with the same definition, MISP uh, or MyESP. And again, proposal one and we're going to say encryption and we'll give it the AES256 we're going to propose a hash and it's going to be SHA1 and we'll do the same again proposal 2 encryption AES uh, do you know what we, we, you can have different ones let's go triple des for the second one this time just to show you that these, these do come up differently. Um, and we'll stick with SHA1 here. Okay, now we need to give this a lifetime as well. Um, so I'll choose any one of these again. But the lifetime should be shorter than the lifetime of the IKE group. So let's make this half of that, 1800. Okay, then we're gonna edit VPN IPsec site to site and we're going to tell it what is the other end of this tunnel and the other end is going to be the 38002 okay that's the other end of our tunnel and we're going to set the authentication mode to pre shared secret so we're going to have a pre-shared secret between the two of these. We're going to set, whoops, set uh, the authentication pre, now we're going to tell it what the secret is. And the pre-shared secret, well, why don't we make it uh, tutorial 15. That's fine, so that's our pre-shared secret. And we're going to set the default ESP group Tell it what group we're going to use. What group did we create? Well, we created my ESP. Now we need to tell it what IK group. So set IKE group. Whoops. Group. And the IK group was Mike or my IKE. And then we want to set the local address. This end of the tunnel. So this local address is 64002. That's the local end. It's going from 64002 to 38002. So those are our two ends. Excellent. Now we just need to tell it the tunnel traffic. So in this tunnel, so set tunnel. One, 
local. It can be any number there, one to whatever, but we'll, we might as well plump for one. Uh, local prefix. So the traffic going through this tunnel will be prefix 172.16.0.0 with a 16-bit mask. And then the remote prefix. So the remote network it's going to is 192.168.1.0 slash 24. Okay. Type top and then commit. And hopefully we won't get any errors. Good. No errors. Save that. So it's saved. Excellent. That's the east done. Now let's flick our attention to the west. So if I go and grab the west and bring it in here. Okay, here's the west router. And now we're going to do the west so that we have the other end of the tunnel set up. So again, we want to do configuration mode. Uh, once we're in configure, we want to set VPN, IPsec, and you see how these are all very similar. Both sides, obviously, will have exactly the same. I'm going to tell it the interface this time is ETH0. It's exactly the same as we did on the east side. We're now doing the converse on the west. So really, the only things that are going to change, we're going to have the same proposals, for both IKE and ESP, we're going to have the same um, authentication mode pre-shared key, but the things that will change are the local prefix, this time will be 192, and the remote will be 172. Um, and the site-to-site -site peer end will be the 64002 rather than the 38. So it's going to be exactly the same, just the converse. Um, so we've set the IPsec interface as ETH0. Once you have ETH0, then we're going to set VPN IPsec. Um, this time we're going for the Ike group. Um, we're going to have exactly the same name, my Ike. Proposal 1, you remember what we chose for the encryption? The encryption was AES256 on Proposal 1. Um, proposal 1 hash was SHA1. Proposal 2, encryption was AES128, I believe. And Proposal 2 hash was SHA1, still. Yeah. And the lifetime, the lifetimes have to match 3600. Now we're into the ESP group. So ESP group, my... ESP, um, proposal one, the encryption was AES256, the hash was SHA1, yeah. The proposal two, the encryption, we went for three days, I think, to just to mash it up a little bit. Um, and then the hash was SHA1 still. Yeah. The lifetime for the ESP was half of the lifetime for the other one, for the Ike. So it's 1800. That's fine. Edit, uh, VPN, IPsec, whoops. Site, whoops, I could spell. Site, site, peer. And this time it's the 64002. That's our other end. We want to set the authentication uh, mode as a pre shared secret. We want to set what that pre shared secret pre set. Oh, sorry, set authentication pre shared secret. Uh, we made a tutorial. Tutorial uh, 15. Yeah, I believe it was. I can check that. I just want to make sure. Tutorial 15. Yeah. 
So that's fine. We've got our pre-shared secret. We want to set the default ESP group is going to be my ESP. We want to set the IKE group. Is going to be my IKE. We're going to set the local. There's a lot of setting here. Set the local address as 38002. And finally, we want to set the tunnel. Set tunnel, and we called it one local prefix is 192.168.1.0 slash 24. That's the local side on the west. The remote side is 172.116.0.0 slash 16. Okay, hopefully. Excellent, save that. Right, I'm gonna pause there because this is already getting very long. This is part five, we've now set up our tunnel. So both ends should be seeing the tunnel now, and we're about to start some traffic through the tunnel. Join me in a second for part six, where we're going to wrap this up and show that we're getting encrypted packets.